Hello and welcome to the solution to our data checking exercise. We're looking at how high temperatures make the plastics used in firefighters helmets become more brittle. Our test equipment's output is formatted as shown here. We get the date, we get a title line, and then we get a bunch of records each of which has a temperature, a duration, and a brittleness. And we know that if we hold the time constant and increase the temperature, or hold the temperature constant and increase the time, the brittleness must increase. And this lets us do some sanity checking on our data. For example, given these four records, we know that 106.0 at 60 seconds can't give us a brittleness of 12 because we already have a record with a lower temperature in the same time, but a higher brittleness. Our job is to write a program that will check the data by making sure all the entries obey this rule. And it should behave like a normal Unix utility. If it's given a file name, it reads from that file. Otherwise, it reads from standard input, it prints error messages to standard error, or it prints nothing at all if it detects no problems because no news is good news. Now we're going to use this black on white terminal for editing and this black on yellow terminal for shell commands. You can see that we've already got our data file and it looks exactly like it did in the page I was showing you a moment ago. So let's come back here. We know we're going to need the system library because that's how we get command line arguments and standard input. And we're going to say that our reader is get reader from command line arguments. Then we're going to say our data is get the data from that reader. And then we're going to say check our data. And then we're going to close the reader because it might have been a file. This is about as big as our main program wants to be and it follows a very standard pattern figure out what our source is, get the data from the source, do something to it, and then clean up afterwards. The reporting is built into the checking. So we have four functions that we need to write. def get reader from args is supposed to return something. For the moment it will return none. def get data from a reader is supposed to return data. Let's switch back to our data description. If we need to have some number of records, we don't know how many, and each one has three fields, then we want a list of lists. Each of these records will be a sublist, and each of those sublists will have three values. So for the moment, let's just return an empty list, because we don't have any data. And then we want to check the data. We're only printing messages if something goes wrong, so we are going to say pass, because we don't have any checks to do yet. At this point, our whole program fits onto one small screen. We now can think about filling in those functions. We can do them in any order. Let's start with getting the reader. It's going to be simplest. If the len of args, that's the command line arguments, is equal to 1, then all we have is the program name. Remember, sys.argv of 0 is always the name of our program, so we return sys.studin. That's going to be where we read from. Otherwise, if the length of our command line arguments is 2, then we have the program name and a file name, so we want to say reader is a file of the file name, which is sys.argv1, in read mode, and return that. Otherwise, something has gone wrong. We've got too many arguments. We're going to say, here's a message to standard error saying usage is check.py with an optional file name. The square brackets are how Unix help often indicates that an argument is optional. Now right away I don't like this function because it's returning there, it's returning there, and it's not returning anything there. I'm going to say reader equals sys.studin just to create an alias. Pull this line down here and get rid of that. I think this is easier to understand. We've got an if branch that either gives us something to read from or prints an error message, and then we're going to return the reader that we decided we wanted to read our data from. Okay, how do we get the data? Well, looking at the format again, we need to skip the first two lines and then handle each line after that. So reader, let's just read a line, but not assign it to any variable. I'll throw a comment on that though. This should be the date. If this was a production program, we would read that line and check that it actually started with D-A-T-E colon and had some plausible date on it. However, we're not going to do that here. Similarly, I'm going to read the second line and throw it away. I'm not assigning the result to any variable. Uh, this should be the title line. In a production program, I would check that we were getting that line with degrees, seconds, and brittleness. Now, our data is currently an empty list. 
and for line in reader, let's process each line in turn. Let's say that fields is line dot split. Then we're going to say that the length of fields has to be three. If it isn't, we're going to print an error message because each of our lines must have three values once we split it on spaces. Now we can say that uh, degrees is float of field zero, seconds is float of fields one, and brittleness is float of fields two. This data file has integer values for seconds and brittleness, but experience tells us that durations can be fractional seconds. We don't know that brittleness can't be a fractional number, so let's use floats instead of ints. Now, our record is then the list degrees, seconds, and brittleness, and then data gets that record appended to it. When we're finished, we're going to return data. I'm going to say each other line must be uh, degrees, seconds, brittleness, record. And I will cut that out to look like that. All right, I'm not sure this is right, but I think it has a good chance of being right. Let's go down and figure out how to do our checks. This is the most complicated part of the program. Looking at our data, we want to compare each record against each other record. If the degree fields are the same, but the first has higher seconds than the other, then its brittleness must be higher than the other. If the seconds are the same, but the first record's degrees is higher than the seconds, then its brittleness also has to be higher. So we have two cases, and we need to compare each record against each. We don't know that they're necessarily in order, so let's do the simple and inefficient thing. So for first in data, and for second in data, this nested loop is going to set first to be each record in turn. It's also going to set second to be each record in turn. This means we're actually going to compare each record with each other record twice, once left to right and once right to left, because both of those variables are going through all the data. This does twice as much work as we need to. We can make it more efficient later. Let's keep it simple for now. We need to unpack these fields. I'm going to say that um, degrees one, seconds one, brittleness one, is assigned first. First is supposed to be three values in a list, so I can assign that list to three independent variables, and Python will unpack things on the fly. I can similarly say degree two, seconds two, brittleness two is second. So now I've got the fields in hand, and now I can write my if statements. If degree one is the same as degree two, and seconds one is greater than seconds two, and brittleness one is less than brittleness two, then, whoops, don't know how I'm going to report my error yet. We'll come back to that. Similarly, if degree one is greater than degree two, and seconds one is the same as seconds two, and brittleness one is less than brittleness two, then whoops. Let's put a space in there to make it a little easier to read, and put it all onto the screen. I'll add one more line there to make the nesting a little clearer. We're going over all of the data with first, we're going over all of the data with second, so we want to compare first with second. And as I said, we're going to be wanting we're going to wind up comparing each record to each other record twice. We can worry about that later. Let's just get this working. These two if statements each test one of our failure conditions. We could combine them in various ways by using OR. We could put parentheses around the first triple of tests, OR, and then parentheses around the second triple of tests. Personally, I think I would find that very hard to figure out. The last thing we need to do is figure out what do we do for whoops? Well, let's report error of degree one, seconds one, brittleness one, 
degree 2, seconds 2, and brittleness 2. Similarly, we do the same thing down here. So now our function looks like this, still fits onto the screen. You can see that report error is being called in both cases with the same parameters. We could just put a print statement in here to put out the error message. We'd have to duplicate that code instead of duplicating the call. But at this point, I think this function is complicated enough. I don't want to have to try to read what may be a complicated print statement at the same time as I'm reading the, the loops and the if statements. But now I've got one more function I have to write. Def report error of degree 1, seconds 1, brittleness 1, degree 2, seconds 2, brittleness 2, print, uh, parenthesis, degree 1, second 1, brittleness 1 is inconsistent with, hmm, okay, I've got six parameters to this function. I'm not really happy with that. Too many pieces of information flying around, and really, if I go back down to where I'm calling it, I already have degree 1, second 1, and brittleness 1 packed together. That's first. I had to unpack it to get the individual values. I've got degree 2, seconds 2, and brittleness 2 packed together in second. I had to unpack it to get those values. So why don't I just report error of first and second? Now, I have to remember at this point that degree 1, second 1, brittleness 1 are the values from first. Degree 2, second 2, and brittleness 2 were in second and have been unpacked. I don't think that's going to be hard for me to remember if the code is only this size. If it was three pages of code, I might lose track of how those variables related to each other, but I think the combination of names and values is pretty memorable. I can do better. I can say record 1 and record 2. Now the naming's completely consistent. Record 1 gets unpacked to degrees 1, second 1's brittleness 1. Record 2 gets unpacked to degrees 2, seconds 2, and brittleness 2. Then there's my comparisons. All right, let's come up here and call this left and right. We could call it record 1 and record 2 and say print left is inconsistent with and right. All right, let's switch back to our terminal window. There's our data. Let's say python check.py data01.txt. This data, I believe, is correct, so there should be no output. Again, always think about what your tests are supposed to produce before you run the test so that you're not psychologically biasing yourself. Wow, there's no output. And if I try to read from standard input using a redirect input, all right, I'm not supposed to produce output, and I am, in fact, not producing output. That doesn't mean my program's correct. Let's come back here, go into data01.txt. Let's save that as data02.txt. Let's try a few test cases. 102 degrees, 60 seconds, brittleness 11. 102 degrees, 90 seconds. Let's take that brittleness down to 8. This data is wrong. So, if I read that file, good, I get the error message. Let's swap the order of the records. Good, I still get my error message. Let's try 110 degrees and 60 seconds, 102 degrees and 60 seconds, and raise that brittleness to 18. Now, is this correct or not? Seconds is the same. Temperature goes up, brittleness goes down. Right. Go and run that. Tells me it's inconsistent. Swap the order. Tells me it's inconsistent. Okay, there's a few more tests that I want to do. Two records isn't nearly enough for me to check this, but I believe this is on the right track.